Hey everyone, this is Helena and I'm really excited to be talking with Nicole Elisa again today. Nicole is a transformational love coach who helps women own their irresistibility and worthiness so they can attract the man and the relationship they've always wanted. And I'm especially excited to talk about this topic today because this is something that I personally struggle with, which if you've seen some of my videos, you probably know that. And that is how to be more patient, both in your love life and just in life in general, to sort of let things unfold organically rather than getting this sense of urgency, which can really be killing your love life. I've just seen that happen over and over again in the lives of so many of my clients. So I'm excited to jump into this today. Welcome, Nicole, and thank you so much for talking with me again. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. This is, like I said, one of the top problems I see in women and actually in the comment sections of a lot of my videos, a lot of the ones that we've done together, Nicole, we get this question, how to be more patient, either with one particular man, like if they're in a new relationship or even a long-term relationship, or, you know, maybe for women who have been single for a really long time and they're starting to feel discouraged or frustrated because they know the kind of man they want to attract, but it just doesn't seem to be happening yet. So Nicole, let's, let's jump in. What is it? Why is it so hard to be patient sometimes? Like, you know, what is it that causes us to feel urgent and frustrated when we're not getting what we want on the timeline that we want it? Well, I, like I was sharing with you before, I, I was telling you that the other day I was looking at a belief, you know, I ordered something online, it arrived, and I noticed that this feeling of impatience started to build up in me, like, or anxiety kind of, like, oh, I have to go get it, I have to go get it, I have to go get it, and I was like, but relax, Nicole, like, why, why, why are you so, like, caught up in getting it? Like, I could sense in the back of my energy, like, fear, and I just sat down and asked, okay, so what, what's, what's going on? And I realized it was a fear of losing love. Like if I didn't get this now, somebody would take it away. Obviously, this is not just about a package. This is something that was going on like in, in the back of my mind for years. But what I want to say about this is that a lot of the times when we're used to getting things, you know, in the specific way that we want to, or we want it to be like super like clear, like exactly as we ordered, a lot of the times when we are in this energy of control, it's important to remember that the need to be in control, it really comes from fear. So the more you can actually like look at the, the, the core reason behind that fear, and the more you can actually let it go, it would allow for things to unfold more beautifully in your life. And the reason why this is, doesn't work with certain men in a relationship is because they can feel like you're trying to control them. The same thing works like when you are trying to manifest uh, to be in relationship like with, with a man or you want to meet the right man and you're like but like you're analyzing absolutely everything and if things don't go as you expect them to you immediately start to judge it to make it mean something right and I see this a lot of the times a lot of women like when when they were growing up as kids like maybe they had their parents leave they had something happen that would make them be like oh if well if I don't do this now it's not gonna happen or like somebody else can take like it for, away from me. And we got to really be honest with ourselves. Like what is underneath that need to have it happening now? And where does that judgment come from? That is brilliant. And we talked for a long time before we started recording this video. And I just feel like this is like going to be a coaching session for me personally, <laughs> because this is something I totally struggle with so much in a lot of different areas of my life. And hopefully it will just be helpful for everybody. But I know that this is one of the top questions I get from women. So I know this should really be helpful. You mentioned the word allowing, allowing things to unfold organically, which you know ties right into everything I teach about feminine energy allowing and trusting are huge feminine energy qualities and they can be the most difficult things to do it's kind of like this hidden energetic level where we can lean back and kind of you know watch what a man does and respond and that's kind of easy but underneath all that like you said there might be this fear of you know letting things unfold in the timeline that they're meant to unfold because we do feel urgent and so what do you have to say about trusting and allowing really anything you have to say on that i know would be so helpful for everybody yeah that's that is so key because here's the thing i've seen that when you're in an energy of trusting and allowing you, like the things that you want can unfold in a quicker pace 
actually the need to control is what slows it down energetically right because you're not trusting it's such a it's such a, a strong energy that carries so much weight it's like traction like you're 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 utilizing like all these different tools instead of actually just going like really soft like this like ah like I'm going to allow, right? And I see this happening because here's the thing. A lot of the times when you're trying to control, it doesn't come just with your need to control this particular moment. It comes with a lot of energies from your past, a lot of stories attached to it. And the, the funny, interesting, I want to say funny, it's not funny, but I, I say funny because it's, we carry, a lot of the times we carry this energy of like, well, I was so disappointed in the past, right? And I got to do things on my own. I've worked in the past with a lot of women who, who built a lot by themselves alone, right? So they carry this energy of like struggle, battle. If I wanted to have to fight for it, that energy is important to cancel it out. Um, I'm really sorry you, you, you had to go through stuff like that, right? And it's just, it needs, if we want to change something, we cannot change something at the same level of consciousness that created it. This is from Albert Einstein. And this is really key. What this means is, if you keep saying that it's going to be difficult, that you're going to be alone, that you, you cannot trust other people, and you're trying to force something on the outside to change it, you're still carrying that energy with you. Therefore, you keep creating it, even though that's not how other people are allowing things into their life, right? So it's really important to be willing, and I know it can be scary, to actually just let go of that narrative. And in order to build that trust, uh, and, and it's essential in particular when it comes to love life, this is going to be a huge bomb because it's all about partnership. Relationship is about partnership and it's about trust. So maybe you've been used to, to doing these things on your, your love life, you know, like on other areas of your life, maybe your career, and it's what you're used to. But when it comes to love life, it's all about partnership, right? It's all about trust. So it, it doesn't work the same way. So being really willing to say like, hey, I've got to maybe look at how I operate in partnership, right? And not just partnership with your guy, but first let's look at the number one partnership. The number one partnership needs to be the one that you have with the universe or with like your life, right? How much are you believing that life is going to support you, right? And then how much are you going to support yourself and allowing yourself to have what you want? Right? It's not about the guy. It's not about the man, particularly because I believe that men offer us a really beautiful thing as women in regards to trusting, right? Trusting, like letting life take the lead. And when you are in a position where you allow yourself to be a happy participant, you know, a happy collaborator with the universe, then what you want comes easily towards you. So the first thing is looking at how you show up in partnership um, and, okay, how can I actually trust? I promise you, I've seen this happen all of the time. When you actually uh, begin to really trust in the universe or trust that it's going to happen all right, then it happens in, like, in the most magical way and it just adds to the trust versus adding, adding all this energy that I won't have it. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Everything you said just resonated with me at such a deep level. And, and I tell clients this a lot too. I, I, sometimes I just say it's going to be as easy or as difficult as you're telling yourself <laughs> that it's going to be right. I truly believe that the life we are living is directly related to our beliefs, the story we're telling ourselves, our consistent thought patterns. Right. So I love that you brought up partnership too. Oh my gosh. Partnership is it's just so important. It all operates on trust. First partnership, of course, being with ourselves, right? So I love that. And even though I have all this knowledge, I can still, I'm going, we, we just spoke before and I'm going through this right now a little bit in one certain area of my life. Um, it's still hard. <laughs> even if you have the knowledge, sometimes it's really still hard to apply it to yourself. If you have if you're invested in something turning out a certain way, for example. So do you have any tips for women who know these things? They understand it on a logical level, but um, they're having a hard time applying it to like their unique situation. Yes, yes. The number one thing that's coming up for me is, here's what I've seen in my life. <clears throat> for you to transcend any situation, you must find it within you to learn how to forgive an experience, uh, 
release it and be grateful for it always. And that's those for me, like in many ways, it encompasses a big element in trust. And what happens is that if you are still holding on to the pain and making it real, many ways you're still like you're holding on to the energy and maybe you haven't really forgiven the experience. So forgiveness is huge, huge because it, it stops you from reacting in fear anymore. So when you can forgive an experience and find it to, to find it within yourself to be grateful, something, you know, something out of that experience that maybe, Hey, it's leading you to find a better man, for example, or it is helping you to trust again, right? And, and to define who you are, that you're not going to let all those things like break you or, you know, like if you can find it within yourself to forgive and then find something to be grateful that shows you that life has you, right? Then it's a lot easier for you to do. And I see that a lot of the times what's going on is like we haven't really fully forgiven I am personally working on this myself. Like earlier today, I was like, I've had it. Like I'm going to trust and I'm going to be the most trusting person like in the universe when it regards to like to my relationship with the universe. Like I'm going to be that, right? Because I want to be open. I want to be available. I understand that the more I can trust the universe, the more, the better, the, the better things work for me. So how does that, this look like for me, for example? I recently like had like a, a business opportunity come up, right? And if it doesn't work out, then I'm like, okay, the universe is protecting me or the universe is keeping me like in alignment or something else is going to be give me greater joy. Like practicing being unattached to because the universe has your back, right? A lot of the times, here's the thing. Here's something that I heard from Oprah in her book, The, the Seed of the Soul. Um, no, she, that when she interviewed the author of The Seed of the Soul, he was talking about how the, the, the intention behind the intention is what manifests in your life. And I always remember that because it's like if your intention to control, right, or your intention to have things show up in your love life is because you feel you won't get it because time is going to pass you by or you won't be able to have kids and, or something that comes up in that, then that fear is the energy that is ruling over everything. And that's the fear that you see manifested on the inside, out on the outside at the end. And I know that the example that I gave is just like a, a really tough one, but it's like, we've got to really notice like, where am I coming from? Where am I coming from? If I'm coming with fear, if I'm talking to a man that I'm dating or that I'm in relationship with, and I am really upset that he's not like listening to me or he's not like moving the bags, or, like the, the trash, you know, like in, in the time. And I start communicating from a place of fear um, and upset all about it. And that's what I get. Right. But the more like I can forgive and maybe try to understand what's going on with this guy, like understand what's going on with him. Right. Have a loving communication and practice understanding that energy liberates people right? It, it gives them freedom in many ways. And when people feel free, they tend to behave in their best way. But when they feel like you're judging them, that you try to control them, that you're trying to like be in this space, people tend to react and show you the same thing that you don't want to say. It's so true. Oh my gosh. I've just seen that happen over and over again in my own life and in the lives of a lot of my clients. And yeah, something I see if someone's operating from fear of maybe like, if I don't make things work with this guy, maybe there's no one else better out there. Or if I don't get into a relationship right now, time's gonna pass me by and that causes them to settle in so many different like situations, especially in love. It causes, causes us to wanna settle, to just grab on to any guy that comes along. And a lot of times we're not even aware that we're doing this, but I've just seen it happen over and over. So, I can see how trusting and allowing that, you know, the right man for you or, you know, your situation and your relationship, you know, uh, being patient for it to unfold and improve in its own timeline could really help. I've heard the great quote before, every decision we make is based on fear or faith. Of course, you don't want to stay in a situation that's unhealthy or abusive, of course, right? But any decision you make to stay or to go or to give a guy a chance, go on another date with him, you can kind of ask yourself, am I coming from fear or am I coming from faith or from this trusting and allowing 
feminine energy side of yourself that just knows that things are unfolding exactly how they're supposed to. So great question to ask yourself in any situation. Really powerful. And I really feel called to say that patience is not that you're not going to do anything. Like I think that there's like mm -hmm. active patience or, or just active trust. And because here's the thing, when you stop judging, this is key. When you stop judging the experience, because a lot of the times we can look at things from the eye of I won't be loved or this is the same story. And that's a judgment, right? And you start to see things. So you shut down and you're not aware to your good um, of what is unfolding to your highest good. So when you stop judging the experience and be like, okay, I'm willing to see this differently. then how can I show up in a different way? Then what happens is that you are inspired to take a different action right? And in, in that different action, because you just open up your energy, you open up your consciousness, what happens is that the type of love that you want comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when we operate in fear, when we make decisions based in fear, and we got to understand that that's the comfort zone for the subconscious mind, or for the mind in general, then a lot of the times we get the same thing. I feel like quoting Albert Einstein a lot today, but he says like true insanity he's trying to do the same thing over and over again with a different result, like expecting a different result. Yeah. So we got to be willing to be like, at least being willing to see something different. Like how can I trust more? Um, not necessarily. And like I said, I always say this is trusting yourself and trusting the universe. So if I remove like those glasses that I have on about, like I'm going to get hurt or he's not going to listen to me or all these judgments, if I just move it to the side and I explore it from a different angle, right? Then what could happen? So I really believe that it's important to ask yourself, where, where am I coming from? What's my come from? Am I coming from a fear, uh, from a fear based place? Um, if I'm coming from a fear, fear based place, then a lot of the times what I will get is a fear based response, owning that. Um, and okay, how can I come from a loving space, loving for myself first, maybe um, my constant judgment of the situation is not allowing myself to have it easier. One of the common things that I hear from women all the time is, you know, Nicole, but I've always had it so hard. I've been alone all my life and I am afraid that this is how it's going to be, but you don't understand how frustrating this is. And I'm like, but you're still holding the energy that it's going to be hard. And I understand that it's going to be difficult because it's been your identity for so long, but are you willing to be held? Are you willing to change this around? Would it be helpful to have support, right? It's just really important that you are willing to do this. I once worked with a client who, uh, who said to me, like, Nicole, like she was crying. She was like, if, I feel like if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. Because she was having a battle inside of herself, right? Like she said, like, if I don't meet the man that I want to meet now, like it's not going to happen. But like I've been so betrayed or, you know, it's been so many years where I've been single. And she was just in that energy. And she was like, if, I'm, I'm scared because... Like, I'm not fully trusting that if I don't do this now, I'm not going to do it, right? Thankfully, like, she's super happy with her man now, right? But she had to trust, and she, she just, I feel like she had to find the courage within herself, right, based on all the other things that she achieved, and she was like, I'm just going to throw myself into the unknown, right? Or else, like, my mind is going to get in the way. Like, my pain is going to get in the way. So I find that it's really important. The more we can actually start to practice building that trust. I promise you that things are going to work out a lot easier. She was single for over 10 years and she met her man within four months. Right. Wow, That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Wow. But we need to change our level of consciousness needs to change. And the more we show willingness, the willingness is the willingness over and over like willingness. Now willingness tomorrow, willingness the, ne the, the next day, right? Like let me be even more willing you will start to see with the experience and, and, and the knowledge that you learn as you learn how to practice this more, that things are going to unfold. And why do I say that? It's people have the love that you want. We just got to learn how to look for it. Yeah. They I have saying, it. Yeah. It's, it's there waiting for you. You just have to allow it in, right? There's a difference between 
leaning forward, trying to force it or push and shove a guy into doing what you want because you're coming from a place of fear or of like grasping. I can get the sense of this like grasping energy. Like I have to hang on to this guy, even if he's showing me very clearly that he's, he's not the right one uh, versus leaning back and allowing that right man to show up or allowing your man to transform, you know, in, yeah. in the relationship. So yeah. that's really important. One thing that came up for us before we started recording was both Nicole and I um, expressed how irritating it is when people tell us to just be patient, <laughs> right? I have a, a mentor, um, someone who, who I go to for advice and guidance uh, for like the past eight months since the beginning of the year has said, you need to learn patience <laughs> in lots of different areas. And um, it's just so frustrating to hear that, even though I know it's true. What would you have, to, what would you say to somebody in that situation where they know they need to learn it? Uh, but just the thought of that is so irritating because I, I get it. It's like, we want what we want when we want it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all about, I agree, because it's like whenever people need to, like, tell me, like, you need to be patient, it's like, I just flinch. Um, <laughs> but the thing that I want to say about it is that, here's the thing, because I, w I wouldn't want to confuse, like, I wouldn't want the audience to be confused when we say, oh, you just got to allow instead of trying to force it. Like, yeah, um, when, I, when we say allow, I, I want to say that we're not talking about just like, oh, I'm just not going to do anything. Yes. And if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. Right? I mm -hmm. think it's important to be like, it's, it's joyful. It's, it's joyfully showing up for what you need to do, right? Joyfully showing up for what you need to do, what's present before you and falling in love with the process and not the results, right? Because it's who you become. And in that patience, what happens is that you're not accepting the moment and finding the joy in what needs to happen. Right. So if you turn it inward and you're like, oh, uh, let me focus on me right now. Right. How can I be more loving? How can I be more accepting? How can I communicate it in a way that he's actually going to listen to me? How can I like how can I actually show up in my dating experience in, in a way that it's like really fun? Because the moment where we become like, oh, you know, like, oh, my God, I have to be patient. Like you've lost your zest, Right. And that's your magic when you when you want to attract things like. Um, happiness is a decision away and actually when you're the happiest is, is when you are, you attract the most so how can you be happy with what you're doing how can you fall in love with the process and really understand that it's not about the outcome because it's not about that particular guy or him doing this It's about really embodying trust for yourself and understanding that the universe loves you right so that you're not attached to an outcome to be happy, right? Falling in love with the step that is in front of you can easily bring to you what you need. And that is what accelerates the process or that is what brings you what you want instead of whenever you go into that space of, oh, you've disconnected. So the number one thing that we want to talk about here is how do you keep yourself connected? Um, and, and I know that I, you know, I'm talking in like in larger terms, but this is really what it is because it's love. Like I said, it's more about the energy underneath the steps than just giving you like an outline. Oh, you need to trust or you need to believe or you need to feel like it's all about like, hey, how do I actually do this? Because these are bigger things. So it's really important that we stay like connected. Like how can you build that trust and fall in love with the process? So there are certain things that you could do. Uh, for example, you can, you know, uh, create a dream board, right? Like have more honest conversations with yourself. Like let's put an example, a specific example. You, you would like for a man that you're dating to do something for you, right? Instead of just going to the negative feeling, go to the positive emotion. Ask yourself, like, what is available for me here? What would be fun, like, or good for me to like explore or have this conversation with? Like, how can this actually help me grow? And in that space, you are actually open. You are available. You are willing. And you actually open up your energy to receive what you want. In that energy of acceptance, non-judgment of the moment, that's actually where a man is actually going to listen to you or things really open up for you, right? Not when you're judging it or like getting like really frustrated because you don't know what you don't know life could be working out for you like in your favor in the background 
And then you're like, but oh, it's not like it's not happening right now, right? And then you're like, oh, like the universe is like, we lost her, right? Like she's no longer allowing it. And next one, right? Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh, so much came up for me when you were talking. It's yeah. First of all, when are you more attractive? When you're just trusting and allowing that things are unfolding and you know, everything's working out for you always, or when you are so attached to the outcome and walking on eggshells or trying to like force a guy to do what you want in that moment, it's very obvious, right? You're more attractive when you're trusting and allowing, first of all, not just attractive to a man, but to everything you want. And also I love what you said. I truly believe that, that once you, you know, not even just state a desire out loud, but once you have a desire, once you know what you don't want and then know what you do want, the universe, or you could, you know, think of it as God, your larger, larger part of yourself, your soul, whatever your belief systems are, are just like, here you go, here you go, like constantly, immediately delivering you these clues. That's like a step towards it. But just like you said, if we're impatient, if we're urgent, if we are tuned to the absence of what we want rather than the presence of what we want, we miss those clues, right? We miss those clues or we don't see them because we don't, we don't see this clue or this step towards it um, that's showing up because we want to get all the way to the finish line. We don't see how one thing is going to lead to another. A lot of times if you, some, you accomplish something, you get a, a job that you want or you, the relationship you want, you look back and you go, wow, this thing led to this thing. This person introduced me to this opportunity. And you can, you can look back and see how one thing led to another. But when we're in it, you don't normally see it like that. So you have to tune yourself to these clues and you do that by trusting and allowing, by being patient, I hate to say it, you know, but by, um, Really like just having this knowledge that, yeah, actually, even when it doesn't seem like things are happening, they are happening, right? Um, yes. Almost like a, like a pregnancy, you know, it's like you, you don't, you don't, you know, there's a process for it. You don't get impatient and go, oh my, you know, it's been four months. Why isn't this baby um, fully formed yet? Or so I'm just trying to think of an example, right? It's like your body knows what to do. And if you try and rush the process, things don't turn out so well, right? often. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And there is a science to this because I feel like we're talking like in bigger terms that people are like, how do I understand this? Like what, what, then how do I do this? I get it. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause whenever people talk to me in bigger terms, I'm like, okay, but how do I implement? Right. <laughs> but, but the thing is that, um, there is a science to this. It's just that it's more of a heart based science to this and that's why it says that when it's come it comes to love maybe some of the things that we learn to do in other areas of our life it doesn't necessarily work we're dealing with other human like people like we're, we're dealing like human connection and interaction and energy is felt and i can tell you this whenever you start to judge your experience it comes with data it comes with things from your past the moment that you're like but why isn't it happening yet i guarantee to you that it comes with a story from your past of all the things that you felt like, but I believe that and it didn't work. Right. I want you to re really see that that's your personality saying that that's your small sound saying that you don't know if the reason why it didn't work was because life has your back, which chances yeah. are that's the reason why. So if you can actually turn around, like I said, forgive your judgment of the experience and just be grateful, right? Then you move at a quicker pace. And that, that's what I want people to understand. Like if you, just show up with gratitude for the whole process, right? And you know how to look at things in a way that says, you know, I am supported, I am loved, this is good for me, then the magic unfolds. It just unfolds. And but we, when you hold yourself in, in a judgmental block, right? Like I should be here or this should be happening. I have seen that that kind of like forms a link between like, like that just holds you down, right? Because judgment is such a heavy energy, right? And what you're vibrating is, uh, I'm, I'm lacking something. This is not okay. This is not good. This is not good. And that energy is like expanding itself, expanding itself. And all you're creating is a lot of resistance, right? Instead of just being, oh, I want to be in flow. Okay. What is my like next step? My inspired step? Like I want to be open. I want to be flowing. Right. I, I want to be like really feminine in a sense where what I do and everything that I do and everything that I show up is just so magnetic. And that is actually a more feminine energy. 
that captures like a man's heart rather than being like, but you need to do this, <laughs> right? It, it's when you, feminine energy is all about trust, you know, allowing, actually like letting go, like letting things unfold uh, and understanding that there's a perfect order to things. And sometimes in that perfect order, things can happen really magically immediately if you want them to. Mm -hmm. It's just, you've got to learn how to trust, right? And if you're all uptight and you're bringing up all like stories of lacking your past, and get it. Like, when I say stories and everything, and I hope people don't feel like offended. I'm just saying that I understand your pain and I'm, we've all gone through really painful things. It's just, if you are clear that you want love, right? And you want amazing love, then what do you need to let go of? Because if that pain is blocking you from actually living or creating that type of love that you want, then you got to ask yourself, like, okay, what choice am I going to make? Am I going to open up my heart again fully? Like, like my client did. She needed to be like, okay, I'm just going to drop this all together. Right? She, she, she made that choice. Other people, they're like more slower in nature and how they do this, but it's all about like rebuilding your trust because a lot of people ask themselves like, why is it that I keep attracting the same thing? Right. Even though I'm trying to use like all these tools and I'm doing all these different things and it's not happening is because you, you haven't let go of your pain. It's so true. Oh my gosh. It is so, so true. We should probably do some more videos about this. We had like a little bit of a difficult time narrowing down this topic because there's so much that goes into it. So if anyone has questions, comments, things that are hard for you, things that are, if you have challenges in this area, like I certainly do, we, you know, that we all do, uh, let us know in the comment section, any videos around this that would be helpful because it's such a big concept that sometimes it's hard to narrow it down unless we know what people are specifically asking for. I heard a great analogy the other day of, of it's almost like, um, standing under an, an apple tree, for example, <laughs> looking up at one of the apples and feeling urgent about it not being ripe yet or feeling impatient about it not being ripe yet. And, um, and it's funny to think of it like that. And, and it's kind of ridiculous because we don't care about the apple like we care about this thing, like attracting the man of our dreams or improving our relationship or some other area of your life. This works for all areas. We care so much about that, that there's resistance and old beliefs that are, like Nicole said, coming from past experiences. Um, if you could just sort of think of it like the apple, like there is a process and things are happening and that apple's going to ripen and you're going to be right there, right? It's going to get ready for you and you're going to be right there. You can't miss the boat. It's just not possible. Um, then it will help kind of like, it's almost like you don't even have to think of it as patience in that point. Think of it as just knowledge. You know, if you know, like vegetables growing in the ground or apple ripening on the tree or, or, or you know, uh, being pregnant and having a baby, there's this knowledge that there's the just gestational period. There's a process to it. Um, similar to weight loss. I was interviewing uh, my friend Leah Lake the other day on, on uh, magnetizing men and money to you. And she likened it to a weight loss journey. If you're going to take score of where you are every single day, you're probably going to get frustrated or, or start to say things like, well, it's not happening yet. I'm making all these changes and it's not happening when actually it is happening. And you wouldn't want to lose 50 pounds overnight. It would be very uncomfortable and hard on your body, right? So uh, things are unfolding and, and this is going to be the most amazing, joyful unfolding. If you can start to embody those beliefs instead of this fear and holding on that we've been talking about, uh, that can help you more than anything else. Um, so this has been amazing, Nicole. I'd love to hear any last words or tips that you have for our audience around, around how to be patient, trusting, allowing, anything you have to say on that. Yeah, I love what you just described about the orange. It makes so much sense. Um, here's, and it's the truth, what I would say is sometimes when we're trying to rush, like, you know, force something to happen, do you actually know that what you're trying to force is actually good for you? Ooh, right? that's good. Yeah, that's really good right when it's, it's all about your relationship with the universe it's like okay universe what is the best thing for me then show me right because that way you are an open and happy participant like you're a joyful participant and you know that what's going to unfold is good for you versus you saying it needs to be this it needs to be this way right letting things unfold in the most magical way 
And that will really, 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 really help you a lot. It's all about the, your relationship with yourself and the universe, honestly. Because right? when you embody the energy and it's ask, asking yourself, well, that thing that I want, is it, am I actually ready for it? Even though I think that I am, right? Because a lot of the times what happens is that we try to rush things and then we mess it up because we weren't really ready. <laughs> And that's why I say <laughs> that's what I do. That's that's yeah. That's what I do. That's my issue. I, we've all been there, but yeah, yeah. it's you, it's like you want to run out ahead of it, right? I can catch my well now. I have I know a lot more about this. I can catch that energy of wanting to run out ahead of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, and then you can just turn around and ask the universe, okay, so what is my next step? That way, you're happy. You're showing up as it needs to, and then you you trust yourself more. You trust the universe. And it's all good versus ignoring all these signals that are telling you that maybe it's not right. Your desire is right and it's happening. It's just the more you become willing and available to just play with the universe, then things start to unfold in a happier tone, right? The other, the other area is more of a of resistance. Why? Because the energy is built in lack and in fear. But the other one is built in trust. And therefore, the results will be different. Inspired action is, is what it is about. I love that. And again, these are huge concepts. You might have to watch this a couple times to really let it sink in like some of our other videos. You know, um, I'm personally going to watch this several times because this was very helpful for me personally, Nicole. So thank you so much. You just yeah. gave us so many amazing tips and words of wisdom around this. Um, it was very, very helpful for me. So I know it was helpful for everybody. So we love hearing from you. Type in your thoughts and experiences with this in the comments section and any requests for future videos because Nicole and I love making videos for you together. We just have so much fun doing this. We love being like your personal guides and we really do read all the comments. Um, so please let us know what you think in the comments section. Nicole, thank you so much. And uh, where can people find you and get your free gift? Of course, I'll post everything in the description, but if you'd like to, to talk, tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. I, I like to work a lot with energy and um, helping really like people like understand like these larger concepts and how to like make it practical. Uh, and I tend to explain more of like the bigger part because it's important to understand it before we go into the practical. So there's less frustration and there's like more opening and more fun. <laughs> so um, my website is Nicola Lee Status, N-I-C-O-L-E-E-L-I-S-S-A.com. I have a gift. So it would be like NicolaLisa.com slash gift. And it shows you a little bit about like the work that we do energy wise and helping you really like let go trust. It's called like my beautiful woman meditation and energy clearing. And I would love for you to have it. Thank Amazing. you so much for having me. Yes, you're very welcome. I love that meditation. I think I told you before I downloaded it myself after the first interview we did. I think it's just amazing. So everyone, please go check that out. It's free on Nicole's website. I'll post a link in the description. Thank you so much again, Nicole, and we will see you soon.